All right. Good morning, everybody. Just getting some things set. All right. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Trade Findings and Adjustments of September 23rd, 2021. Um, as always, let me just uh, follow up with my last time with you guys. That was beginning of November. We talked about what caused the recovery over here of the mid-August um, correction. Of course, that's somewhat irrelevant now. Did make the point, um, slower employment means that Fed is less likely to look at increasing rates sooner than later. And I'm sticking with my right now bad is good for the market sentiment. We had another, just to uh, highlight that part again, Initial claims, continuing claims, 351 versus 317 expected. So higher unemployment claims than expected. And obviously that's a great example of a bad thing that is being perceived somewhat positively by the market. And the reason is Fed came out Wednesday, said that they're not raising rates. Of course, that's kind of what we expected, but they will begin to taper uh, I think at the end of the year, which is also kind of what was expected. So the good news, according to the market, is that there's not a rate hike. And of course, unemployment being higher than we'd expect is going to, to keep that going. Pretty simple. Um, we went over, get back on our chart here. Let me update it from this morning. Still doing, getting back above the 50 day on our S&P. Uh, we went over a Baidu leap calendar bull call last time. Um, 165 to 200. I wonder what this is like right now. This would be interesting to look at. Just for, oops, not Vidu. I want Vidu. Just for the sake of following up, in case anyone has had gone with that. Uh, let's see, January 23, 165, and a 22,200. Something like that, about $28 on the long side, $325 on the short side. So we have made a dollar up on the way down for Baidu since the beginning of September when we talked about this one last and lost about a dollar on the longs. So, maybe a little over a dollar, but pretty much you'd still be doing all right. And since we're nowhere near that strike price at 200, 
just bring up Baidu real quick for our follow-up. Baidu has to get all the way back up here to be called away from your long call position for a nice profit. And it uh, doesn't look like at this point that's what's going to happen. Pretty amazing how consistently it's stayed right on that 50 day. Let me zoom in so, so you guys can see a little easier. Pretty much every time it's tried the last three weeks to get over the 50 day, it has fallen right on it. I mean, it is very clear. It's kind of crazy to see it so clearly trade along those um, technical lines. Usually things don't do that. So there's some clear preference not preference, there's some clear um, well, for lack of a better term, there's a clear preference by the market to follow some technical averages for Baidu. Held this pivot point right on the penny, pretty much. Um, so it's, this has been pretty interesting and pretty interesting as well. It, it was affected a little bit. Uh, I mean, I, I say a little bit, that's a little bit for Baidu, but I mean, this was a 163 down to 154. You know, about a nine, $10 move to the downside from hitting the 50 day and, and going through the, uh, if you're familiar with the Evergrande debacle, a uh, construction company in China, you heard, hopefully if you guys were here Monday, heard Kevin talk about this at length. But um, what caused much of the sell-off from the 17th down on the 20th and the Monday, um, was that construction company in China has $300 billion in debt and they're trying to hold on, but they are probably defaulting. And the wor worry is that, or at least the worry on Monday was that that would cause a, tr a Lehman Brothers like chain reaction to kind of compare it with the 2008's crash and uh, other businesses and financial um, bondholders from that Evergrand company would cause a chain reaction in other markets and other places in China. Today though, the narrative has changed. Um, we had uh, Kramer on CNBC come out and say, basically doesn't look like there's going to be a sy systemic uh, chain reaction style effect of the Evergrande um, debt crisis because uh, according to him, just leave this note so I remember to talk about it uh, or leave a note. According to Kramer, it's it's not going to create a, a problem because um, other countries and other uh, land-based holders of that debt are willing to take a loss in order to stay friends with China and have the other opportunities to do business in China and hold other investments in China. So it doesn't look right now that this is gonna create a widespread problem. Of course, there's no reason why that might not change, but we have made some adjustments this morning. Let me leave this note. The Evergrande, I think that's how it's spelled, debt 
issue will not create a chain reaction in financial markets because those debt holders are willing, according to him, to take a loss in order to I'm paraphrasing, but in order to stay friends with China and other opportunities there. Any questions about that? Get rid of this. Questions about that? That really kind of sums itself up. Let me see if I can't get the actual. Here's our Fed holding rates near zero. Tapering itself is going to increase medium and long term. Uh, okay, that's what they think. Let's just go to CNBC. Try and find where Kramer. Bear with me a sec, guys. I'll have to just. Here it is. Two biggest worries about the stock market are now off the table. First one, let's see. If you're one of the inflation hawks who thought the Fed would have to make, have to take a tough line today, meaning yesterday, then you have to go buy stocks right now because uh, Jerome Powell has put the concerns to rest. Basically, he's thinking there's pressure on money managers to continue to now buy the dip rather than disagree with, or I guess even if they disagree with, with, um, Powell keeping interest rates unchanged. The other problem here, as we talked about, Evergrande has got another big bill coming due today, which is tomorrow was yesterday. Um, coming due tomorrow, which is today though, one they owe foreign bond owner, owners those foreign bond buyers are mostly from countries that are totally on the hook to China, Kramer said. So they're not going to care about these bonds. They'll just take the hit. That's why despite what you heard in the press, 
the risk from Evergrande never really was systemic because everybody wants to do business with China, so they're just willing to overlook losses. Copy that. Bear with me. <laughs> All right. Man, this is so goofy. There we go. All right. Don't need this. Moving along. It's looking at first solar. Man, did they take a tumble from the, the same issue. But really, um, I think part of the reason First Solar is down today is now because our next big infrastructure spending bill coming up, um, is now into focus and we need that to go through and it needs to inc include a uh, infrastructure and green energy, et cetera, et cetera, um, point in it to show that first solar and some of these other green energy companies are gonna get a, a nice boost from our federal government. That's kind of where that's at, and we're kind of right back. Just go back to for solar, kind of right back where we started. 1845 cost basis for those of you who have the first solar calls, and kind of right there, 1830, 1837, back to break even. But again, uh, as we're looking at something longer term, and the whole reason why we're in it is still on the table. There's really nothing to do there other than be a little annoyed that it's back down and remember that we're looking towards the future. Um, give me your questions on First Solar if you have any. I think that pretty much does it for that. Let's see. Talked a little about Baidu. Some things we did this morning. Let me go into some orders just to show you. Uh, we took off some puts on Disney. We paid around $6 for and got $10.30 back. So a nice. A nice little uh, pickup in value for Disney, which has gone sideways too many times. We we had protected up one at 185 a couple weeks ago when it just didn't didn't seem to want to hold this 185 186 ish area right here. Had a couple other tops. That was awesome. And on this day, we were looking great in Disney. Nice to have that on for that dip down here. Of course, we didn't catch the bottom because there was nothing on the 21st that told us 
this Evergrande issue wasn't going to continue. Um, and the narrative changed today, which is why, again, we're getting our bounce. So we thought, why not profit from those puts? We have another bounce on this level around 180, excuse me, 172 that it's bounced on fairly regularly over the past three months. And those were our reasons. So that one looks nice. Uh, let's see. Facebook. Facebook, we had 400 strike and 390 strike short calls for covered calls on shares of stock for those of you with shares of stock on Facebook. Um, not everybody is it so stinking expensive, but um, for those of you that had that, we took those short calls, covered calls, I should say, off. 390s, we took in about 360-ish dollars of credit and bought them back to close for 73 cents, so nearly $3 of profit there, so like 1%. And then the 400s took off for 26 cents that we took in. Crap, I'm trying to remember, but it was it was like four dollars, so that did a little better with the 400s, which is cool. So nice to get those taken care of. Um, choosing to leave for. Facebook puts on at the moment because we're still kind of here in no man's land hitting a bottom of our bottom range of our RSI but Facebook's issue right now has to do with the fact that they knew about some problems with their platforms and pretty much chose to ignore them had uh, have issues with especially teenage girls and women um, having bad psychological effects of, of being on Instagram, Facebook, and um, you know having the body image issues, uh, which is of course, if you ask me, a fairly obvious problem for for Instagram, Facebook. Um, but they knew about it, despite many other studies. Um, they did their own study, knew about it, and really haven't done a whole lot. They've basically just they basically just made it so you can't see the number of likes or hearts you get on Instagram for posts to try and help people not um, <laughs> live their whole life around likes and posts that on Instagram. Um, but the worry is this is one of the criticisms that you know governments have on Facebook and uh, another political problem for them. So keeping puts in place we can always add new short calls you know 165 up above the 50 day if it continues to struggle and get up some more credit but right now that's where we're at um what else did i want to show you bank of america and under armor trying to get under armor puts off we'll get back to that kind of have an open order for those and letting them sit bank of america took 327 of our puts, all of our puts covering, sh uh, protecting shares off. <laughs> Reason being is having a significant bounce over the last three days. We can look and see about where it gets to 42, 50, three dollars, and see where it gets to before earnings coming up 
fact. Let's see where earnings is now that I'm thinking about it, which is what I would spec expect mid October. So if we can stretch this run out a, a few days, if not a week or so, maybe we can get a better time and price to protect for earnings. That's kind of where we're at there. Um, let's see. Then we're talking about Under Armour. Under Armour. Back above the 200 day here. So looking to get off puts for nearly a break even. Seeing a technical bounce above a resistance point. That looks nice. What has changed with Under Armour? Well, this whole sell off, or at least much of it, had a lot to do with their um, factories out in Asia uh, having issues filling demand. And the story there has changed as well, along with the larger, broader economic story of Evergrande causing causing the issues everybody's afraid of but right now that story has changed and so has this story for Under Armour. So off our puts will come, probably look at the end of the day, see where we're, we're at, but um, that's the thought and reasoning behind that one. And pretty much everything else, there's a reason to just kind of hold on Apple hasn't moved a ton, still below a 50 day. I'd rather wait a day and kind of see where that goes. Boeing, we took off, oops, not Bank of America. Likes to fill in Bank of America when I do Boeing. Took off yesterday when we had this big bounce and has continued to bounce today. Holds the 50 day, um, we'll look at maybe this pivot point or if it continues to go, see where we get before protecting a little higher going into October. Um, but that looked like a great call to get puts off there and save some money on the way up. Um, unfortunately, those we took off for a loss is Things did not look like they were holding on the 210, but um, important to have them on in case things could not hold because the bottom much further down for Boeing. Okay, guys, that's really kind of all I wanted to go through today. I just wanted to tell you what we we're doing give you a little update on, on what we're looking at and what the market and our economy and et cetera, et cetera, the news was doing. So it's nice to have a good update a day and we'll enjoy it. And let's see where this gets us. It's sure to be probably a volatile month and a half two months with uh, September and October, our usual culprits, and we'll deal with things as they come. Any questions or other thoughts or concerns? Ford, 
was the other one I forgot to mention. Huge bounce above the 50 day. Got those off this morning around 1350. Spent a little on protection there, but looking back, why didn't we protect up here at the 50 day? Well, because if you look at it and you ignore the fact that these next few days we didn't know because this was not the next few days, holding the 50 day, Typically, we're going to decide to wait another day to see if it struggles to hold that. Unfortunately, that came the same day that all of the Evergrande garbage came out, came all the way back down to 1275-ish, 78, before holding there and bouncing nicely back up. We did make portions of this downward slide up, so not too upset about that. Did what we had to do there. And beautiful bounce today. Let's see if Ford can't recover a little more. And that was pretty much it. Not seeing any questions come over, so I'm assuming you guys are Good to go. And that's really all I had for you. Just giving you a moment in case there's any questions. Thank you guys for joining me. As usual. And uh, we'll see you Monday with Kevin. You guys take care. Have a good weekend. And uh, I am signing out now. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Take care.